Shark jaw preservation involves removing the jaw from the shark, cleaning it, and curing it. The jaw is made up of a denser and stiffer cartilage than our bodies. We preserve jaws in order to look at the jaw structure, as well as the teeth, which give insight into the diet of the sharks. In this video, we will be taking the jaws from two black tip sharks, one male and one female, ranging in size from two to two and a half feet. Here's the male who is a young of year, meaning that he was less than a year old. Here are the tools we will be using for the various steps involved. We will start with the jaw breakdown and cleaning. We will use all these tools. For the jaw soak, you can use household tools, peroxide, and Tupperware. Finally, you can use nail polish if you're feeling fancy, some resin. Although this may look intimidating, just know that this is my first time doing this too, so if I can, so can you. As you can see, the first thing I did was cut the head from the body. This made it easier to handle given that this shark had experienced some dissections. Here you can see I'm trying to detach the jaw from the shark's head, or chondral cranium. I found that the scissors and scalpel were my best friend during this process. At this point, I started scraping and trying to get as much of the gums off of the jaw as I could of the male shark. Remember that the goal is to get to the cartilage underneath. That will be under the gums and the little pieces of flesh that you're pulling off. It'll be that bright white, which almost looks like a bone, but is actually made of cartilage. Here's the female black tip getting ready to soak. And here's the male black tip, he's about to soak. Next you will let the jaw soak for 24 hours and here you can see the second jaw that of the female starting to fizz in the peroxide already. As you can see, the jaw and flesh became a bright white. We will then continue to take off any remaining flesh without damaging the jaw. As you can see here, I took off a little too much of the outside layer, causing breakage and a translucent bottom jaw. So don't do what I did. I used the paper towel to prop mine open and then I let it dry outside in the sun for 24 hours. As you can see, both of my jaws are dry, but the male jaw is darker than the female due to a storm hitting while it was drying outside, so be mindful of the weather. 
First I painted both jaws but left out the teeth so that it would be easy to prop up for drying. I then went back and painted the teeth of both jaws with my clear coat, allowing them to dry flat without messing up. Woo! You did it! Now you can get a good look at the different parts of a shark's mouth. If you look closely, you can see the many rows of teeth the sharks have. This makes it easy for them to be replaced. Some sharks go through thousands of teeth in their lifetime. If you look closely, you can see my two jaws in the windowsill. All right, let's look at some other shark jaws. The upper teeth and spot tails are strongly serrated, broad and triangular, while the lower teeth are narrow and less serrated. The upper teeth and sandbars are broadly triangular, while the lower teeth are more narrow and straight. The upper teeth and black tips are broad with narrow cusps, they're strongly serrated and straight, while the lower teeth are narrow, straight, and have little to no serrations. Here you can see the huge difference between a baby black tip and a mature black tip. Here you can see just how different the teeth of each shark are. The jaws are about the same, where the hinges are and where the notches are at the top, but the teeth are all quite different. These teeth are similar between these two sharks, which show that they both may feed on fast bony fish. In addition to looking at diet, jaws like these can also be used by scientists to retrieve genomic data. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did.